The course on Indian heritage and culture has been developed for the purpose of general knowledge and not for the in-depth study of this course. However, this may kindle the interest of the learners further. The information shared in this module has been sought from reliable sources, the links of which have been mentioned on this slide. The presenter has tried to forward the information with utmost caution to keep it off any bias or personal opinion and has limited it to the information sought from the references only. Namaskar! Addressing the learners of India's heritage and culture through this platform reminds me of the golden words of the renowned American writer Mark Twain who once commented, India is the cradle of the human race, the birthplace of human speech, the mother of history, grandmother of legend, and great-grandmother of tradition. The most valuable and most instructive materials in the history of man are treasured up in India only. Thank you, Mark Twain, for redefining India, our motherland, so precisely yet beautifully. India truly is the foundation of Homo sapiens who first evolved in Africa and came to settle down in one of the oldest known civilizations that is Indus Valley civilization. Before we dwell further into knowing more about the origin of our motherland, I'll bring forth its brief introduction. India is a South Asian country which is also uh, pronounced as a subcontinent. It is only called by various names which either came with different eras or due to uh, different languages. It is named after Indus River which was also known as Sindhu in Sanskrit. In Indus Valley, one of the oldest civilizations that rose in 3000 BC. In Hindi, it's formally called Bharat, a Bharat Ganrajya named after an Indian epic poetry and in English, Republic of India. Hindustan, a Middle Persian name, came into being with the Mughal era. The world knows that India was undeniably the richest in the world, called as Sone Kichiriya, before the British invaded us in early 17th century. It is estimated that the British looted us of nearly $45 trillion. Jarring, isn't it? These figures bring forth the wealth that our nation possessed. Besides this, India was the only country to mine diamonds until Brazil started to mine in 1726. No wonder why India was invaded from time to time. Despite the fact that India's uh, history has witnessed various dynasties and invasions, the matter of pride is that India in, in her history of 10,000 years has never invaded any other country. Substantiating the fact that we are a peace-loving country, furthermore, in support of the point made here that India believes in existing in harmony, 17 states share international boundaries the, uh, in the north with Pakistan and Afghanistan, with Bangladesh in its east and in northeast with China, Bhutan, Myanmar and Nepal. This geographical diversity of India from north to south and east to west leads into a variety of landforms and climate, hence the vibrant culture. A huge triangular pen peninsula of South Asia surrounded by China uh, to the Himalayan kingdoms and Bangladesh and Pakistan. It constitutes of distinct landscapes from Hindustan in the north to Deccan Plateau in the center. Besides, Tamil in south includes coastal plains on both sides. The vast geography of India truly glorifies its rich and diverse culture with different races of people, 
and religions and their vivid practices and variety of regional languages. Despite extreme variation in caste and color, India boasts of unity in diversity. It has the second largest population in the world with 800 million people. Majority of them are of Aryan race uh, who invaded Indus Valley in 2000 BC. They founded small kingdoms in north of the country and brought with them the Vedic literature, Sanskrit, epics, Hinduism and caste system. Sanskrit was their lingua franca. Rest of the population is either Mongolites or Negroes. Though such terminology is now considered offensive, but anthropologists introduced it in the 19th century to classify human traits. Dravidians, who are considered to may have been the indigenous uh, before the Aryan came settling here, built cities and temples. Besides this, the credit of creating exotic artworks found in India goes to them. Now, I'll take the learners through a deeper insight of India's origin that witnesses its roots into the beginning of human civilization. As mentioned in the beginning of this session, India took birth with the rise of Indus Valley. Also known as Harappan civilization around 2500 BC, Homo sapiens arrived uh, in the Indian subcontinent from Africa around 55,000 years ago. Harappa and Mohenjo-daro were splendid merchant towns of western Punjab which is now in Pakistan. The migrating population embellished its vibrant history and culture due to which India emerged as a highly developed civilization by 4th millennium BC. The rich cultural heritage and splendid wealthy resources time and again became the center of attraction for invaders from the northwest, resulting in different regimes. It was an urban civilization with scientifically laid, well planned and well built towns. The drainage system was well developed with wide roads etc. Uh, the houses were of two or more stories and were made of baked bricks. The antiquities proved that metals like iron and copper, gold and silver ornaments, toys, pottery wares and other household articles were in use. These antediluvian evidences suggest it to be a highly developed civilization even in the ancient times. Besides this, Harappans grew wheat and barley as their staple food and they ate various cereals, vegetables, fruits, mutton, pork and eggs. Their clothing that was made of cotton and wool uh, garments endorses that they weren't primitive at all. With this, I'll sum up the origin of India and come back to you with the next session on, his on History of India.